And happy Friday! It is our Friday Live. Welcome, welcome, welcome to everyone. So what I do here first on Friday is I love to see who is here. So I'm just going to say hello to everyone that is in the chat. So if you would do me a favor and leave me your name, where you're from, and what is the temperature. Yes, I need to know. Um, and... Yes, I'm going to go through and I'm going to say hello. Also, if you're new, if you've landed, just found out about HB Ministries, maybe within the last month or two, this is your first live, please let me know. That encourages me so, so much. Also, if you watch today's live because you noticed the thumbnail on uh, YouTube, would you please email me or just let me know, direct message me on Instagram or Facebook and just say, hey, joined the live today. I would love to hear from you personally. So thank you for that. Uh, let me head over here. First of all, for those that don't need, know me, my name is Heather Baxter. I'm CEO of HB Ministries. HB Ministries is a faith-based international women's ministry. Yes, international. And it is a ministry for you. So you can believe, behold, and become. It's all about her beliefs, her beliefs. What do you believe in? 
uh, what's going on in your life at this time? You know, what do you believe in? And sometimes we just need help to experience God in that season of life. Because honestly, that's the way we were created to experience God. So here you will find all the tools and the tips and the tricks from me. I've been studying scripture, teaching scripture for over 25 years. I'm an author and a speaker and your best friend in sisterhood. Okay. So that's me. Oh, and it's Michigan. And guess what? We have three to six inches of snow coming today. Right to the side of me is my window and it is legit my my Jeep is covered in snow and I have a white Jeep. So it just looks like a mound of snow outside. It's like completely, the trees are beautiful. I mean, I have a yard full of trees and looking right now at a gigantic pine tree and it just be covered in snow is probably one of the most beautiful things. It's just a beautiful view out my window right now. It's very snowy and it's going to snow all day. And my husband is super excited because he has one of those big machines that go outside and like blow snow everywhere. And he just thinks it's the funnest thing to do for hours on end. So that's kind of what's going on in our world. Yeah. And it's spring. It was the first day of spring here, just a couple of days. So yeah, that's how wacky uh, <laughs> Michigan is. And that's why in the last newsletter I sent you, uh, not this last one, but the one before that, I talked to you a little bit about being stuck in between seasons and sometimes we can feel like that too, right? We can feel like we're stuck in between a winter, but we know a spring is coming. We're all in a season, by the way. Anyway, hello, Julia from, of course, the UK. Again, international. Julia has been here for a long time. Thank you, sister, for supporting the ministry and being here. Debbie Berna, happy Friday, sister. It's 40 here in New York City. Whoo, and she's freezing. 40 in New York City. You know, I want to get to New York City one day. That's one of my dreams. I want to get there. I want to go visit and just be there. Um, Facebook user, I'm sorry. Oh, it's Pamela. Hi, Pamela. I think, Pamela, you and I talked early this morning, correct? Like, we're early birds. I think she was one of the ones up at 4 or 5 in the morning. I'm an early bird. Um, I want spring back. So do I. It's cold, windy, few inches of snow today. It should melt this weekend, though. I heard we're having snow going right into tomorrow, and we're in Milford, a little bit northern, and I have way over three inches of snow right now. So um, I'm wondering if you're close to me, because it's pretty snowy. Hello, Tina. Um, nice to see you here. 61 and cloudy in Missouri. Okay, I'll take 61. I'm so glad that you're here. Thank you for joining today. Um, Kathy Williams, hello. It's 68 degrees in Phoenix. Okay, that's beautiful. I have my um, my uh, completed love journal, and I'm ready to refresh my goals. Okay, so what she just said is she has her completed love journal. This is what we just finished last month. And if you got the email, we are having, so just so you know, announcement now, we are having a Zoom live meetup this Monday. It was in the, the newsletter. I will be sending another newsletter out on Sunday night just so everybody has the link to the Zoom address. And I would love everybody to attend. Everybody, even if you're new watching live on YouTube, the only thing that I'm going to ask is that if you took the class, I want to hear from you. I want to hear what the Holy Spirit spilled into you. So in the newsletter, I do talk about that. We're going to have it Monday night from 7 um, to 8.30. You can come, you know, as long as you can. And I had sent out a journal prompt, journal prompts that I use. That was also in the newsletter. Listen, if you don't belong to the newsletter, head over to heatherbaxter.com. Right up at the top is a subscribe link. Please, please subscribe because I send all kinds of freebies there. I just send stuff there. I keep you in the loop through the newsletter. And my goal is to be committed to that because that keeps you in the know. Lots of changes happening here in HB ministry, and I want you to be in the know of that. But anyway, we are going to do a review on this. This would be a great way for you to just sit back and listen how God moves, because today we're going to talk about how to experience God's plan in your life. Well, one thing that I do on, you know, our seasonal studies, and I do here daily, whether we're in the Dream and Explore workbook or this, is to help you experience God. That's it. I want you to experience God with your beliefs. 
I want to transform you to so that you can see God in your career, your relationships, your marriage, whatever it may be. And how do I do that? How do I serve you in that way? I serve you through teaching. I create all the workbooks, the plans for you. I serve you through workshops when we have them, events when we have them, one-on-one coaching. By the way, many of you, um, so anyway, sidebar, please attend the Zoom. Please attend the Zoom. That's going to be the best for you. But going into this, this coming week, we are in a place here in the ministry, which I will call spring break. Lots of you are on spring break. If you are on spring break, let me know in the comments if you're one that's on spring break. But based on Kathy's uh, comment here, she talked about, I'm ready to refresh my goals. This is our Dream and Explore Workbook 2024. I create these on the yearly. Every single year, you get a workbook that's broken down quarterly. And you have a life wheel in there quarterly where you will review your life, your life. And the goal is for you to experience God. The only way you're going to experience God is transforming your beliefs to his truths, his promises, his commands. And that's not easy. We all struggle there. Amen. But that is the way you were created. That is the way. That is the way everything's going to work. So this beautiful workbook, which I go to FedEx and get my spiral bound, this beautiful workbook is available for you on Amazon, my author bookshelf, or you can head over to heatherbaxter.com and you can download the PDF and create your own binder. A lot of people will hole punch and create their own beautiful binder. That way you can put notes in. Um, Anna, I don't know if Anna's here. I'll see you in a minute when I say hello to everybody. She does a beautiful job. Anna, if you're watching right now, if you don't mind posting maybe even last year's or what your journal's looking like this year over in the HB Women's Community Group, she is one that always downloads this uh, workbook and she downloads it quarterly and puts it in and, and creates the most amazing war binder. She buys this binder thing off of Amazon and puts all the pages in there and designs her own journaling pages. So again, you can grab the PDF and create your own. I um, have mine here and I absolutely love it. I get my initials right here, the little bling blings at uh, Hobby Lobby. So what are we doing this week in the ministry on spring break? Well, what are we doing? We're going into quarter two. Can you believe it is quarter two in 2024? So we're going to review the past quarter this coming week for a week. We're going to reset goals. I'm going to teach you all about that. I'm going to just dive in your life. Where are you going to find those teachings? Well, here on live, but really we have uh, a dream and explore account support group on Facebook. And that group is filled with women that have their workbook. So you, if, if you're new, you're never late. Join. We have the whole year. I Ladies joined last year, the last quarter. And I was so thankful they joined the last quarter because they experienced God and got ready for 2024 at the end of 2023. And some of the things that they had to make decisions on were pivotal. So don't miss God. Grab the workbook. Join me next week. But that is exactly what Kathy was talking about. Um, let's see. 34 degrees in Cleveland. It sure doesn't feel like spring, but soon. Yes. Cleveland's not too far from me. Hi, neighbor. Isabel Rivera, beautiful name. Good morning, ladies. 57 from Los Angeles. LA girl. I have an LA girl here. Woohoo! Um, Denise Armas, I think I'm saying it right. Sorry if I slaughter the names. I'm learning. Um, she is 56 from San Gen Jensinto, Riverside, California. Ooh, from California. Look at us. Look at us from all over. Florida, Lauren, 65 degrees today. So I know Florida has had a pretty cool um, spring break era and even through the winter months. Amen. A lot of people will fly there. We usually go there. We didn't. I'll be heading out to Florida April 11th for, I think, three weeks just to get away. Um, I had a surgery not too long ago and I'm healing well. Um, but ready to go to, to have my Florida time. So thank you for being here, Lauren. 65 degrees, second time on a live, bought the workbook. Thank you. Um, now, when I'm thinking you say bought the workbook, I'm assuming the dream and explore, and I will catch you up, sister. I'm going to pour into you, all of you, to get you caught up. And we're going to talk all about that all week next week. I'll be jumping on a lot. Um, video froze. Um, anybody else freezing? Maybe Maybe I froze for a minute. It is freezing here. Hopefully it's unfroze. <laughs> um, hello, it's sunny and cold here in Pennsylvania. Facebook user, I'm more near Holland. Okay. Oh, Holland. Holland. Pam, the Tulip Festival. 
love Holland. My my daughter used to go to Hope University in um, Holland, Michigan. Um, yes, yes, yes. Okay, hello everyone. 60 degrees in Chile in San Diego, California. Thank you, Margaret, for being here. Hello, Kari. Carrie, 67 and cloudy in Florida. Um, Facebook, I love you all. Pop, snap, and fidget. Okay, I love that. I love your name. Pop, snap, and fidget. Thank you for being here. Um, Debbie, 64 degrees in Daytona Beach, Florida. Yay. Um, hello, hello, Elma, please jump on. I'm just saying hello. New York, 27 degrees and freezing. Pop, snap, and fidget. That's pop, snap, and fidget. I love that. I think we need a Bible study called pop, snap, and fidget. That could be fun. Uh, hello, Andrea from Colorado. Hello, Angela Ward, one of my sisters forever. Um, used to teach with me. Um, well, used to be in Bible study with me for a long time in the church setting, right? No, all good. No interruptions at all. Thank you. All right. Who else is on that's new? Just give me a hello while we're all getting here. Give me a hello. Tell me where you're from and if it's your first time. Uh, while you're doing that and everybody's saying hello to each other in the chats, uh, we will use the chats. We're going to answer questions in the chats. I have some things I want to hear from you today in the chats. And so have your chats ready. It's very easy. I can see it on the left hand of my screen. Today, what are we going to do today? Today, we are going to talk about something really important. And I think you need to know this. You need to write this down either on a piece of paper or in your dream and explore workbook. Okay. You need to write this down. This is important. Now, when I talk about writing stuff down, I use my workbook for everything. So just for example, when I listen to a YouTube live, and this is just a little key on how you can be using your workbooks when you're coming to these lives here. When I go to a live or I hear something, I will sometimes, if I hear a powerful message, I will place it under one of the areas that I sowed in my dreams because maybe it's speaking to that area, whether it's marriage or something about myself, I just take notes. So when I went to the FedEx store, because it's cheaper for you to do it this way than to print out all those pages, or if you're downloading PDF and you're putting it in your own journal, you have the ability to put extra paper in. So I added, when I went to the um, FedEx, I added extra pages so I can journal monthly. I journal in the morning. You're going to hear about that in today's lesson, and I'm going to talk to you. So if you want to, I would highly recommend opening this up and maybe taking notes somewhere in the beginning of quarter two. Maybe getting behind quarter two, which is what I already did, and write some action num numbers down. So right here. I have already started journaling and really working, um, looking over some areas in every area of my life. And we'll talk, like I said, more about that uh, this week. We're going to be resetting up our whole wheel, okay? Our whole wheel um, for quarter two. So that is what we're going to do. But use your workbooks to take notes today because today we're going to talk about, um, we are going to talk about today how to experience God's plan for you and you see it unfold. Now, I have probably taught this message a hundred times a hundred in the last 20 years. But, no, and I wouldn't say the last 20 years because I was learning it for a good 10, maybe the last 10 years. But this is something I can highly put my hand on and say, I have a passion to teach this. This is my passion, to teach you to see God's dream, to teach you to experience God in your life. That is my passion. That is my calling. And honestly, if you would ask my husband or anybody here, they know that I have never stepped away from that calling in 25 years. So I believe I have a little bit of um, umph and some principles to bring you today because I have watched them work. Now listen, little secret. I don't know if it's going to work. Um, one of you sisters on my Instagram, by the way, follow me on Instagram, Heather Baxter one. I'm not there a lot, but I, I, I'm trying to be. That is one thing that needs to happen. I, and I was at a business meeting this week and, oh gosh, I learned so much. But anyway, um, I had somebody Instagram me. I've, I don't know if you're on, but we were talking about just, I don't know, she said something and complimented something and then mentioned my husband. She goes, we only see snippets of him. Um, and he is the 
most steadfast, intelligent, amazing man. Um, but he is not a social media person. He's on zero social media. He gets why I do it. He does not like me to post a lot of family and events and all of that kind of stuff on Facebook. So I respect that. So that's why you don't see a whole lot of that from me. He just doesn't care for me to post us at dinner and post this. And he's just that. And I'm okay with that. So I will put in the fun girly stuff on Instagram and the stuff I like or an outfit I'm wearing or something like that is what I will post. However, I'm going to ask him because he came home early today. And this is part of our message. I want to share um, something I want to give you an example before we dive into these principles about experiencing God's plan. And it has to do with my husband. He's home early today because of the snow and stuff. And I want to ask him to come up and I, I, I can't just pre-plan it with him. I got to catch him off guard and I want him to say hi because he is huge behind the scenes here in all the decision making that I want to make and things that I want to move forward, him and his business support um, HB ministries, they will help in any way. Um, and so we pray together. He's watched God unfold a lot of things and he knows the bigger dreams I have to move things forward. He knows that. So, and I believe God in all the timing. I believe God sometimes puts you in a place where he's creating you and he will give you a little to work on. So sister, if one of you are out there, because now that we're getting ready and resetting, maybe career or purpose, you could have been working on something while you were doing your day job for a long time to get you ready to move out a little bit. You have to move out and start working on stuff and launching stuff. So if that is you, listen, because I was working behind the scenes while working my day job for a good 10 years. And then when COVID hit, God was like, go, this is what I was preparing you for. So sometimes you have a passion and you have no idea why. Um, and my God, and my God, my husband watched that. He watched me back when I worked in church full time. He watched me back when I was teaching messages and working in the church. And that was my passion. I loved it. No matter what, if, if, if people agreed, disagreed, um, you know, it's hard when you're working in a, in a church, you have staff and people that you have to relate with or share your vision with. It's so much easy or working on my own now and running with God, what God always put in my heart. But I'm very thankful to the spaces God gave me in the church because all of that was preparing me for what he had upstream for me. So I'm so thankful. God's the same way with you. So in today's message, we are going to talk about experiencing God's plan for you and seeing it unfold. Where would you want to see God's plan for you unfold? Well, we will be talking about this this week. You have a life wheel. You have a life wheel in this Dream and Explore book. The idea of that is to really look at each area of your life and then say, and really, and, and you're going to see today when I give you these principles, why you need a workbook. This isn't just some tool I want to sell to you. I have been doing this in workbooks that I created just out of Walmart journals a long time ago. I would draw this out and I'll even, if I can get my husband up here, I would remember after I'd set up my journals way back, like 20 years ago, I would say, honey, the journal set up after church today. Can we go to lunch and can I just share some dreams with you? You know, he's not the one writing all these little dreams down. He has watched that. So it's not, and then finally, you know, all of the dreaming, all of the preparing in a workbook of something that I was playing in, what is, what are you, what is God doing in you that he could be creating in you? It's a plan unfolding. What is he doing in your marriage? What is he doing in a child? You, my sister, you, my mom, you, my um, career person that's working in a career space, uh, you, the wife, your beliefs, the way you pray, how you carry things and manage things will affect everybody in your life. I promise you, I have watched the hand of God. It is absolutely amazing. I could never come here with this much energy. But anyway, right now, when I talk about, when I talk about the hand of God unfolding and you seeing it and you learning how to see it, it's going to take work on your end. And I'm going to give you eight principles today, eight or seven, and you're going to jot them down. I'm not going to take long. I want you to jot them down in here. And I want that to be an examine list for you. And are you doing this? Because if you are not, you are not going to see the hand of God unfold. And therefore, you're going to come to Bible study, do Bible studies, go to your Bible study at church, do all of that. And that is great. It fills you up. You have fellowship, but you're missing the key link. 
Are you experiencing God in a struggling marriage or a good marriage? Are you experiencing God with money and finances and where you want to see growth or where you want to see change? Are you experiencing God in your career and in your work or your purpose or your gifts? Are you staying idle? My podcast this past week on the Beautiful Messy Show, a couple, I think it was, yeah, no, actually it was last Friday's live, idleness. Listen to last Friday's live. Pretty convicting there. Are we idle with the things God's given us and we're not working the gifts? Um, our health and fitness, wow, God got on me in that area and I, I am so proud and I'm going to be putting a video out this week in that personal area. Um, so that you can see how, what, you know, what I did in here. So I'm going to be talking about little parts of my wheels this week and they're going to come out. What about your home organization and home? Now that's one that God helped, had me working on a long time ago. I organized my home, clean my home and maintain my home along with doing the ministry. But that was something I had to really get in order and see on paper. So this is not hard. It's a plan to help you experience God in your marriage, your partner, your love, or waiting for that person or waiting for a healing. Maybe there's something going on, a trauma moment, um, you know, post-stress uh, disorder. Um, and there's something that you're trying to heal so that you mentally can show up for the rest of the areas of your life. Well, all of this God's hands on. All of this God wants you to see him at work, which is, I say, experience God. So how do you do that? All right, let me talk with my little intro of how I want to liken this story in you and your relationship to God. You and your relationship to God. Um, this is how I would liken it. This morning, I got up early. My husband usually gets up around four. The alarm, no, no, I said this before. The alarm, tell me in the comments if you have this kind of man. The alarm goes off at four. And he does not get up until about quarter to five, five o'clock. But that alarm goes off. I don't know how he goes. The alarm goes off. He touches it. And then immediately he's back in a snore. Like serious sleep sesh. For what? 15 minutes? Back up. Back in a snore. Hit sleep sesh. I can't do it. When I hear the alarm, I'm up. I'm up at four. Between four and 4.30. Now, if I'm tired and I work late nights in the HB office, which sometimes I do, I can sleep through that. But I am very careful on my schedule, my PM routine. So usually I'm up at four, which is fine for me. Anyway, he got up and, you know, got ready for work and left. And he said, I'll be home early today. Okay, great. So I'm getting ready, putting everything together, going over my list. I have everything um, here uh, documented, everything that we're going to go over, my notes, and just had some, you know, my quiet time with God this morning as I'm preparing for you and preparing for the rest of the day and the rest of the week. Uh, he comes back home. My husband's a planner, a planner. I am a dreamer and a visionary. We work great together. We work great together. We work great together. So the visionary has to learn how to be the planner with the husband. And the planner has to learn to have a little vision. That is where our biggest struggle comes in sometimes in the, in, in the ministry. And I talked to him about that yesterday because sometimes I'm really excited about a vision and he automatically steps to, that's a scam. That can't be. No way. Not going to work. Like his mind goes fully functioning on this, but he doesn't give any room for God to work. And so I'll have to go wait a minute. Now, if I come in and I don't have the plan, I can see where that bothers him. He likes to have a plan Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Now watch, I'm going to show you why this matters when you need to experience God's plan for your life. God has a plan. We are very different from God. We communicate, we relate, we respond, we're different, okay? Two different personalities, two different beings. So watch this, and, and God gave me this visual. I am learning. Again, you are a student of the Word of God. You are going to learn here in HB Ministries how to have the best relationship with God. I am going to serve you so that you experience God. Not that you show up for a little fluff you know, in, in a devotion, but I really want you to see God at work. I want you to do that. And if you need coaching and you're struggling, I will go in that space for you. I have coached in several areas and I'm a tough coach, 
But my idea is to get you in that place and a loving coach too, in that place to see God. All right. So we're getting, he comes back home. I'm in the middle of getting ready really quick and uh, for the live. I know what my day looks like because I print it out and I put everything, you know, I print it off off my Google, put it all on here, have my stuff. So the pink um, is, 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 is an area, the green, all of this. Now, and you would think, well, I'm not a planner. I have a to-do list. So it looks pretty. Okay. It is a plan. I do plan. I do plan, but not like him. You can't, do you know what I mean when you plan, but you can't plan out of the box? It can't be a different plan than what you have. <laughs> That's how we're different. That's how we're different. I have to have a to-do list in front of me, but it's all over the place. I work with it. So I knew the only way we were going to experience greatness in our marriage today, because he came off early, was for me to say, okay, let's make a plan. We can't just be whatever. So I looked at him knowing that this is his strength. And I said, hey, this is what I got going on today. Now, listen to what I'm saying, because when we get into today's lesson, you need to hear this. Hey, this is what I got going on today. I'm so glad that you're home early. I'm putting my makeup on right now, um, just a little bit. And then I'm going to do live. And now that I know that you're home, I didn't think you were coming home this early. I get off a live at about 1, 1 Let's go to the gym because we have a gym here in our house, but we also go to a gym. I said, let's go to the gym today for two hours together instead of evening because we usually work out Friday evenings together. Let's hit the gym. And then um, I know because I know him. I know him. It's snowing like crazy and he's want to get a big his big machine out that he just bought last year. It's like big. He thinks he's like great with it. Um, I'm like, I know you're going to want to get your big machine out. So why don't we let the snow fall for a little bit? You go take a nap because I know you really want to nap right now while I'm doing live. And then we will regroup, go to the gym. And then, hey, how about barbecue some steaks? Because I know it's Friday night. We usually go out to eat Friday night. We go somewhere local here and we hang out and he likes to play a little Kino and we just relax. I'm like, do you want to do that? And then that way you can grill and, you know, have fun outside. Maybe have a glass of wine if that's what you want to do. And then I have a business meeting this later afternoon with, by the way, it's really exciting. It's about some stuff with HB Ministries. That gives me time to do that so he doesn't think I'm ignoring him. And then we'll regroup tonight and relax. He's like, I love that. He goes, that's actually a great idea. So we will, and he, he has to repeat it back. So we will go get some steaks. That sounds really good. And then I can put the steaks on the grill while I'm outside, you know, playing in the snow. I'm like, yes, great. And then I'll come upstairs, work in my office, and then we'll meet back together and we'll do Costco online tomorrow morning together. And then we have the afternoon and we have some lights that we bought for the house that we need to put up. So I will, I would help you with the lights. So we talked out two days. If we do not talk out our plan, we are arguing about what the other one's doing. What are you doing in your office so long? Why are you sitting on the couch? Are you doing nothing today? Do you ever do that? If you're married, do, do you get irritated if your husband's on the couch for more than six hours? We set a plan up so that we can kind of know. We do that all week long too. The reason why I want to share this with you, did that help? I mean, bringing you in a little bit on my marriage, I want to show you how this is likened to the principles that I'm going to share with you. God, sometimes we wrestle with knowing God's plan. Who wrestles with knowing God's plan? Let me know in the comment. Just give me a hands up, a hey, yes. Who wrestles with knowing God's plan for your life, whether it's in your marriage, your career, with your husband, your kids? Who struggles with that? where it really messes with your belief system. Who, who goes there? Now, I've been married for, it's going to be 28 years, okay? 28 years. I know some of you may be longer. 28 years, and I always wrestled with knowing my husband's plan and what he wants to do. Well, we did wrestle for a while, and that brought so much like, gosh, you know, he's busy with his work. I'm busy with mine, but we need to kind of sync together at some point right? And so talking to him, writing things down, sharing and engaging right down to the detail where I'm very detailed. I explain things like visually. He would bring, if he could, he would give me a Google doc. I don't work good with those. I'm learning. I've got a lot of learning to do. 
He don't communicate. I'm a visual. I want to set the scene. Oh, I can see you outside on your machine and you're tending to the grill and it's going to be a fun night. You could have fun and you could take a nap on the couch for a while right now. It's just like, oh, like he, he relaxes in that. It's crazy. It's crazy. The same thing you're going to see this is going to happen in your, your, your relationship with God as you wrestle with planning out your day, your week, your year. So when we talk about the dream and explore in the life wheel, which some of you say you may struggle with this, show up this week and I'm going to talk to you in detail about that. But what I want you to understand is it's a lifelong pursuit with you and God here on this side of heaven. But even though you physically can't see him like a friend or your husband, whoever you're planning out stuff, he is in the exact center of your life and he's waiting for a plan. He's waiting for you to talk to him. He's waiting for you to engage and trust so that he can plan your life. Now, if you don't talk and you remain idle, you don't show up in the eight things that I'm going to share, you will First of all, not do this at all because it'll seem like a lot of work. That's what the enemy wants you to do. Okay, that's what the enemy. And the goal for this is even next year to make it even more simpler. I have some people behind the scenes I know God is using that we are creating something amazing, an amazing package for 2025 already we are looking at so that this tool is even narrowed down really good. I have my busyness in there, but I want it so easy that you don't feel like you're writing all the time. So we're getting there, but it's good. Now, you can't go the whole year with just doing a Bible study and then not plugging in what you're learning to the areas of your life so that you can bring the two, bridge the two together so that you can understand how God's speaking to you. You can't just go about life, fluff it up, and then meet for dinner with your husband. It, it, it just, that is, it's empty. There has to be a little bit coming together. Um, so let's talk about eight things. Let me just jot these down. I'm going to be pretty basic on them, but it'll all come out together. I'm going to bring the, the two together. Um, so number one, walking with God. What does your relationship look like when I say, how are you walking with God? What, what does that mean? How are you cultivating this relationship with God? Um, how are you seeking him to know him? What is your Bible study routine? What is the best time for you that you spend time in the word? What plan are you doing? Um, like how, how is that? As a matter of fact, I think um, Heather, I don't know if she's on today. Heather is, um, actually, she just popped up. Heather Hanson. Hi, Heather. I was just thinking of you. Um, she says, I actually like doing a lot of writing. It helps me reinforce my goals and heart desires in my mind and keeps me focused on my purpose. That's me too, 100%. I'm a writer all the time. And we'll talk about that and you'll see that coming up this week. And it's not a lot of work. It actually gives you the energy to keep going once you get into the routine. But anyway, Heather, um, yesterday I was up late working in my office. It was actually a late night for me. And I was already chatting with her. And then I got up really early this morning and she was up early and she had her Bible time with God. She's like, I have to have my quiet time in the morning before I leave for work. Now, that's a, that's a sacrifice to make that time. That's sacrifice to, to chat that out with God. It's, it takes time to develop the relationship with your husband, to talk about your plans, to let him know what, what's going on, to plan together. That's a lot. And sometimes marriages struggle because the husband doesn't get on that plan. Keep doing it. Keep showing up and cultivating this relationship and you will see God do things in your marriage. I remember when my husband and I were two different places. So I want you to understand that you have to be in pursuit in order to see God's order and plan for you. Pursuit. What is your pursuit? How are you walking with God? What is your plan? How are you showing up with that? I create everything for you. Seasonal studies, all kinds of things. As a matter of fact, while we're on spring break now, because I'm a little behind, it's coming. Spring study is coming. Don't worry. We're always, we're always right on time. But you have stuff. I have never left you without stuff. There's this workbook. There's all of this. Okay. Kathleen says, my husband's not a planner. But you can set the stage through where God 
is putting order in your life for him to experience things for you to kind. So then there's not an irritation. That's a whole nother thing, but we'll talk about that later. Um, but you walking with God and not leaning on your own understanding, but acknowledging him in all your ways, he will direct your path. You will see that. How are you acknowledging? So number one is walking with God. Super, super important. I want to know what that looks like for you. Every opportunity, every opportunity that you have needs to be involved with God. And that is what happens. Your Bible study and this workbook brings the two together. So again, Bible studies are great. Going to church is great on Sunday. Going to church on Easter or Christmas, whatever your beliefs, however you're shaping that. If you really want to experience the best life, I am serving you what you need to do. You really need to seek some disciplines in your life, whether it's fellowship group. I create the group here online if you don't have a church group. Or some of you do have a church group. You have a place where you go to church on Sunday. I highly encourage that you were involved in a place where you're walking with God on Sunday, that you find that place because that can change your marriage, change your space, change your community. And then a lot of women can, can't get out of the house during the week for those extra Bible studies at church. Find all that extra here. Everything's online. Everything is servable and attainable for you here. But I want to see you involved in that because that's going to help you see his revealed plan to you. Again, you can't just sit back and be idle, do Bible study, and then complain about your marriage. Do a little Bible study and then complain about this, this, and this. You've got to hook the two together. And that's what my Dream and Explore workbook does. That's what it's done for me. So how are you walking with God? Number two, when you're walking with God, we've got some talking to do, just like I talked to my husband this morning. So we could, we, we're, on, we're, on, we're, on, we're on like a plan for today. And number two is, how are you surrendering your will to God? How are you surrendering your will to God? Now, let me break this language down because sometimes I have unbelievers here, which means they're learning how to shape their faith. They don't have a faith. They don't know what it looks like. Welcome if you're here. Um, some have been in the church forever. We, we're all over the place. So I, again, have to teach you this for you to understand how to experience God. Surrender your will to God. Can somebody tell me in the comments what the word will means? You will learn that here in this Bible study. Experience God. That's what I want you to do. What does the word will mean? Can somebody just tell me what will means in the comments as I keep going here? That's your little question. Um, surrender your will to God. Many times when we are seeking God or going to Bible study, we just assume, okay, well, this is, we carry in our backpack. This is a good way to put it. Everything that's going on, but we do not write it down to God, talk it out to God, um, nothing. We do nothing. We just kind of keep it in this backpack and then we're committed to whatever we're doing. We go to Bible study, but there's no, there's no bridging. There's no filtering. There's no communication with God. There's no communication. So what I want you to see here is that when you are surrendering your will to God, that means that you are understanding that there's two wills. Thank you. Connie Jones says, my plans will, my plans, Kathy Williams, entrust our lives to God. Great. I love the two answers. The two answers right there. Connie, my plans, Kathy Williams, entrust our lives to God. Those are the two answers. Whenever you see the will of God when you're studying or you're, you hear me say, surrender your will to God. I remember when I first started Bible studies, I'm like, surrender will. What is will? What is it? Okay, somebody dies and they have a will that they surrender and all that stuff goes to everywhere it needs to go. Amen. There are two wills in your life. There is the will of God and the will that you have, your plans, your plans. When I talk to my husband, I have my plans and he has his plans. Okay. We both had that. We need to come together. Yes. Angela, pleasing and agreeable to God. Okay. Your mind, feeling, and emotions. Kathy, thank you, because we're going to go to that and trust our lives to God. Kathy, okay. Will, my plans, God plans. My plans, God's plans. My plans, God's plans. When you surrender your will to God, you're surrendering all your plans, everything in your backpack that you may have never discussed with them, that you carry to church, you carry to work. If you don't go to church, you just carry with you. You have no funnel to discuss it with anybody. 
And inside of that will, inside of your plans, everything that's going on in your life, let's just talk about you right now, because remember, there's your will, God's will. Everything that you're carrying in your backpack are all your emotions and everything that you're thinking. Now, let's, let's take this a little further. All of your emotions in your life will and everything you're thinking, maybe there's something going on in your career. Maybe there's finances. Maybe there's something like your, you know, your spirituality. Maybe there's something in your, your partner and your love life. Maybe there's something in your mental well-being or your home or your physical life. And so you have emotions over that area of your life. Okay? You have emotions. And if you have emotions, you also have thoughts. So these are yours and you're carrying them in your backpack, right? What do you do with them? That's what we learn here. God's will, surrender your will, everything in this area, everything in your backpack, all your emotions and all your thoughts, surrender it to God. What does that mean? What does that mean? It means this. And if you can write this verse down in your workbook, or right under number two, surrender your will to God. This will help you as you're doing your workbook, as you're doing your Bible study, as you're approaching an area that you're struggling with, with your partnership or in your marriage or in your life or whatever. Romans 12, one through two. It says, Romans 12, one through two. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your body, you, Heather, that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice. Again, you're sacrificing to show up. When is that? What does that look like? How are you walking with God? You present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And do not be conformed to this world, the will of this world, but be transformed, be transformed, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. How do you do that? Bible study walking with God, learning, handing him over, learning how to write your dreams, learning how to discuss this with God. And when you renew your mind through his word and you begin to hear him talk and unfold plans, which you're going to go, well, how do you know? You're going to get that in step five. Then you are going to see what's acceptable and perfect. So you could be living in between seasons right now. When I say in between seasons, I would call that a gap. Wouldn't you call that a gap? Like you're in between summer and fall. Maybe you're in between fall and winter. Maybe you're in between winter and spring, which is where we're at right now. The in-between is the gap. What God wants to do in that in-between moment, in what area? You could be in an in-between moment. You are in different seasons in every area of your life wheel. Every area of your life wheel, you're in a different season. Amen? So what happens is when you're in a different season, you're wanting God's will for what to do. And you're like, what do I do? And he may not answer right away, but when you're showing up, he's working in the dark. And I'm going to show you how in a minute. He's working in the dark to transform you to what is good, acceptable, and perfect. How are we walking in the good and acceptable and perfect? And by the way, good, acceptable, and perfect. What do the letters in each one of those swell? Good, acceptable, and perfect. Take the letters. I'm not going to say it. I would love you guys to write it down. Good, acceptable, and perfect. The first letter of each one of those words, what does it spell? Good, acceptable, and perfect. Good, acceptable, and perfect. Do you see the word? Do you see the word? Thank you. Gap. So we're all in a gap. We're all in between seasons. And when you are in between seasons, you have to know and trust that God has a plan for you and that you're not carrying that around in your backpack. So how do we do that? Let's go to the next step. How do we do that then? What do we do? How do we transform? What do we do? How do we renew our minds? Well, you know, you're going to show up. You're going to walk with God. You're going to give him this, but now you want an answer right away. So what's number three? Number three is you have to obey what you already know to be God's will. You have to obey what you already know to be God's will. Well, when I started Bible study, depending where you are spiritually, what, what grade are you spiritually? Wherever you're at, we're all here. Wherever you're at, you're right where you need to be. God will graduate you to the next level in the spiritual language and te teach you the truths and everything. But what is it all revolved around? His will. There's his will and our will. How do you know God's will? Studying God's word. 
God's word says this. And if we go opposite of that, then we get a little shaky. Does he not work with us anymore? Of course he does. Of course he does. I have a daughter right now that is convinced that God may not love her anymore because she knows she was raised as a Christian. She knows that living with her boyfriend is not God's best plan for her. So right now I might as well just kind of stop loving him because I know that he's probably angry at me. So it's easier to just not follow it because I want my will right now. Anybody ever been there? So as a mom, I know that God loves her and I know she's choosing her will right now, but I know God has a plan and I know that through God's um, plan, uh, he will get her attention. So for example, uh, while I'm talking about that, so many people want to know God's plan. I want to know God's plan, I, I, but they overlook the fact that 98% of his will is given through the word of God, is given through the word of God. My daughter knows that, again, raised in a Catholic, a Catholic, I was raised Catholic, raised in a Christian family. And that's good that I said that. I was raised Catholic, but I was not learning the will of God. I'm going to share that with you. There's a reason I said that. I was raised Catholic but I was not learning the will of God. I never even heard the will of God. I never heard experience God. And I never heard, are you saved? That language was not part of my church. So again, be careful how you're being taught. I'm just going to put that out there. So when I came to wanting to know God's will and wanting to experience God, it did cause me to um, change where I was learning so I could get very clear about who God was. And so that's why my beliefs here in HB Ministries are that I can teach you clearly what God's plan is. The only way I'm going to teach you that is by teaching you God's word. So when God's word says, uh, abstain from sexual uh, immorality, I think it's in Thessalonians, my kids are going to run from that right now. They're 24, 25, into, they're running from that because they don't want to obey that. I cannot convince them at all that God loves them so much and that obedience is the first step. And we just said that, obey what you already know to be God's will. I can't make you do that. God can't make you do that. That's why it's called free will. That's why it's called free will. But what I can tell you, when something's going on in your life and you know in your knower that it's not what you're supposed to be doing, that's called conviction. And when you change, God sees that going on in your heart. Again, your heart being your mind, will, and emotion, your mind and your emotions. And the will is either your plan or God's. And he sees the posture of your heart fighting over that and then going, oh, wait, no, I should do this because it's going to honor God. That's obeying. And when you're shifting like that, he honors that. And that's where blessings come in. So if you're missing some blessings, it's because you're struggling with obeying or you're struggling with a sin. Your obedience triggers your experience of God's unique will. Amen. That's it. Yes. Now, it doesn't mean God's hands off of any of my children. Absolutely not. They're in a place where they'll come back around. I believe it 100% because I was there. And that's your time to begin to write down some things about them in your life wheel drop some seeds of what could be or should be in their life. If that's where they're at, that's what I'm doing. Preaching and, and, and on them is not helping. You're in a gap season. They can't see it from your, per, uh, from your perspective, but you can sure pray. Amen. Amen. So obey what you already know to be God's will. How do you know that? You learn that every day in Bible study. What did we learn? We're going to talk about this in Zoom class. Show up on Monday night. Even if you didn't do the study, show up and listen, because I'm going to be asking ladies, what did God show you that you weren't, that you were struggling with? I have some huge things I struggled with here. Huge people I struggled with loving. And God is teaching me through his word what boundaryless love looks like. There's a couple words and phrases that keep coming back out of this book. And so I teach you the language of God's will through your Bible studies, but you have to know it's up to you to obey what you already know God's will is. It was up to my husband to say today, yeah, I guess we could do that. Or yes, I can do that. If we're struggling against each other and, and don't care to listen, 
then how's that relationship going to look? It's not going to be good. All right, let's go down to the fourth thing. Seek godly input. So when you're struggling, and we're going to talk about this more this week, every time that you're writing down something or you're struggling in an area, let's take personal. Let's take personal. I was struggling in some serious areas of my life personally when I first became a Christian. So before Christ, after Christ. And I didn't know how to deal with some sin I was carrying in my backpack. And I also didn't want to pull it out because if I pulled it out, I had to revisit it. And if I revisited it, then my emotions in my mind revisited it. And that took me in, a, in the wrong place. Yet God says in his word that he will cover you with new mercies and new graces and he will take it away from you. So yet I'm carrying it away, but I'm afraid to share it. So here's this place where I was stuck and I didn't know where to go. I needed a spiritual counselor to pull that out and lay it down on paper and get me to write some things, help me recommend some scriptures that I needed to look and pray over so that I could diminish some of these thoughts and experience God's best. Are you maybe in a place where you are just holding on to some stuff because you don't want to go there? If it is, I'm going to say something simple. Head over to heatherbaxter.com, go to my coaching page, and maybe do a boutique session. Listen, I'm going to tell you something. After listening to some of my business sessions out there this week, I just got off of a business call this week where a spiritual faith-based counselor charges $1,000 an hour for coaching. Great, great. I pray to God I never have to charge $1,000 an hour. I charge 100 And that's cheaper than what you would even pay out of pocket at a Christian counselor center. And I'm, I have the degree for that. So if you need to sit down and you need help on godly input because you are going back to this life will and you are stuck in something mentally or physically, post-traumatic stress, something that happened to you. If you are stuck, then you need some sort of spiritual, uh, sacred space where you can learn some words on that so it can pull you out and be instrumental in you opening up to hear God so you can discern his way because you're so closed off emotionally. Don't stay stuck. I, I did a grieving course, and it's interesting. I haven't lost somebody super, 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 super close to me. Yet I did grieving courses only because I had the word of God, the heart from God, and I knew his will that I was able to sit with people that were seriously grieving for seven weeks. Maybe we only met three sessions and share with them how to diminish some of that grief just through the love of God and his word. And it was a release. They would come back and I would just say, thank you, Jesus. I just have the tool for you to experience God. I have the tool for you to experience God if you're if you are um, staying with a sin and not getting rid of it and you just can't forgive yourself. I have that tool. And so you need to understand that. In Proverbs 11:14 it says, "Where there is no counsel, the people fail. Where there is no counsel, the people fail. But in the multitude of counselors, there is safety, there is release." So if that's something God's laying on your heart, find, connect with me. If you're having a hard time on that website, I'm not a post a time, settle a time, schedule a time. Everything's there on the landing page for you. It's very easy. Um, but I'm here. There's programs designed to help you. Don't stay stuck because if you stay stuck, you're not going to see God's plan because that's what the enemy wants is for you to stay stuck. He doesn't want you to find and experience God's best, so he'll keep you stuck in that area. Number five, pay, this is important. Pay attention to how God wired you. So if you want to experience God's plan and see it unfold, I need you to pay attention to how God's wired you. Now, what does that mean? Okay, I'm going to give you a great example. Some of you are in this place right now. Some of you are in this place. First Peter 4.10, write this verse down. It says, as each one has received a gift... Minister it to one another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. Now, I think Pam's on here. Um, and I'll check through these comments before I hang up. I will read and try to address each one. We're doing good. I'm going to go 15 over today. 15 minutes over. Um, so we're one hour in. Give me the 15 minutes, please. Um, anyway, 
I was talking to Pam this morning. She's part of the ministry and I've sensed her gifts. If you've been over in the dream and explore community and work, work group. So again, there's another workshop. There's another Facebook page specifically for this book. It's called dream and explore community group. You might want to head over there because everybody's talking and Pam has a heart and is very wired specifically for planners, goals, routines, helping you break down things and, and, and write out your prompts and really elaborate and see God at work. So she can perform with that gift in a special mission. I, <coughs> I gotta have a sip of my coffee. Mm. I believe that as you see and hear God's plan for you and you're doing your Bible studies, you're writing in your life wheel, you're talking about your plans and your purposes, what I want you to know is that, number one, God has gifted you to perform in a special way. And the more that you do Bible studies, the more that you're going to get a passion. I don't know if you're a year in, two in, three in. I don't know if also um, Norma is here today or you're watching later. If you are Norma, shoot me an email and tell me how you're doing. I know you ladies behind the scenes. I know. she. God was calling her to do some ministry behind the scenes. And she laid it on, you know, laid it out there not too long ago. These are the things. She's been part of HB Ministries for probably three or four years. But as she tapped back in, got some things settled in her marriage, got some things worked out in all the other areas of her life as we coach together, um, God began now to speak to her in, in the area of ministries. And he bestowed upon her a vision. And God will begin to do that. And this is the great news is that he's going to call you to it. He's going to show you through it. And that's where you see your plan unfold. So let me give you a quick example before we go to the next one. I went to school at Central Michigan University where I met my husband. And I was going to school for um, um, recreational therapy. But I also was diving into the psychiatric area. I wanted to be able to work in a psych ward and work with women specifically and help them adapt back to their activities of daily living with whatever mental disorder they had. So all of my training was in psychology. And I went to, uh, I worked in Detroit Psychiatric Hospital, one of the biggest hospitals here. And then I worked at Oakland Hospital, another hospital. And I was working on the psych ward with women that were struggling with uh, bipolar, post-traumatic stress disorder, schizophrenia, depression, anxiety, which is interesting that that's where I worked and that's what I went to school for. However, when I crossed the line of faith and begin to learn how to experience God, so I was walking with God and I drastically changed everything in my life so I could walk with God. I was obeying him, forming my will to him. I was um, really, uh, what, what's the other one we were talking about? Surrendering my will to him. I was paying attention to how I was wired. Well, in this season, you'll know when it happens, you're going to see God's plan unfold. And he started to show me and everything else in your life will just work out. It'll lay out. You don't have to see it all. God unfolds it. God unfolds it. Things were just unfolding. I was like, oh my gosh. And the door opened for me to, you know, get into Bible classes, get into teaching at my church. And that is when I left my full-time degree, my full-time degree, and went in to ministry full-time. You know, took some Bible classes, took some coaching classes, went to Light University for life coaching, um, was an ordained pastor through a church. You know, I was ordained to, to, to do these things and to be accountable to me and God. And I have a, I have a, a pastor that um, overshadows me. All of these things unfolded. They didn't unfold in one day, but I knew my gifts. And I thought I would never be involved in a woman's ministry because that was the place I was the most afraid to sh show up at when I began to show up at church for the first time because I knew God wanted me to do that. So here's what I'm trying to say. Pay attention to how God's wired you and pay attention to how he moves you as you are in this relationship with you. Things will unfold. If you're stuck, it's because you need to go back to some of the things I just talked about. Listen to God's spirit, number six. Listen to God's spirit, number six. I will list all of these um, on our Facebook page when I'm done. Listen to God's spirit. What does this mean? This is probably the most important thing I want you to catch from today's lesson. Most important thing. Are you ready? Are you ready? Listen to God's spirit. How do you do that? You need to learn to simply shut up. Now, what does that mean? This is how I do it. You come to God in the morning. 
You review your dreams and goals. That's what I do. So whatever I wrote down, I review it. Then, then I get to a place, which is usually downstairs in my workout room. Sometimes for you guys, it's the shower. It's a bath. It's on a walk. It's usually these places where you're just free from what you're doing. When I'm done working out and I lay down to do all my stretches, I put worship music on in the morning. It's during that time that I always have a notepad with me. Always have a notepad down there. And this is when I sit down after worship, after listening to a faith-based message, after reviewing my dreams and goals. This is when I will hear God. Now, during my workout, or during something that's going on, whatever is pivotal, whatever part of my life wheel is really hitting me. Maybe there's something with a child that's strong in your life wheel that that quarter or that week or that month. You'll know in your knower what part is lighting up that, that needs attention. Maybe it's something in your career. For me this month, this coming quarter, which you're going to hear in my videos, it's my personal life. Well, that was January last quarter. And wow, did God get my attention. And wow, did he do massive work because I showed up. And I'll, when I'm ready, I will talk about that more. Um, the second thing is ministry and business, my time um, in my physical life. That is where I'm at this quarter. So career and physical are two big, big things um, that, that are lighting up on my life wheel. You'll have those areas that light up. What do I do during that time? When I come to my journal, I just say, again, what did I say to my husband this morning? You're home early. This is what our day looks like. What do you think? We, we communicated. Here's what I do downstairs. When I say, listen to God's spirit, well, how do you know? You'll hear it because once I set this all up, he's, God noticed that you set this up. He watched you. He was like, oh, she just took the time to do that? Oh, wow. I just saw her sit in that little corner and get all excited about writing all this out. Oh, wow. He sees that you engaged, like my husband saw me engage. He sees that. That right there got his atten attention. In the Bible, it says, seek me and you will find me and I will show myself strong unto you. How does he show himself strong? He will unfold and you will begin to see things line up. You will not find that just going to church every Sunday in your, you know, religion. There is more to it. And that's what I teach you all year long in this ministry is that you walk away and your beliefs are being formed to experience God. But this happens when you do not remain idle. So I will be on you. You get what you get, right? So when I lay there, whatever's pressuring, I will say, what is next in my career, God? And I might just give it while I'm working. What is next? What is, what is going on in my marriage? What is next? What do I need to do? Now, these questions need to be linked with you having a Bible study time. I do not create Bible studies that take you five hours to do. I create a Bible study that gives you just enough and you can go with it with as much of time as you want. You get one simple verse or two simple verses with a theme for the day, a theme for the week, and it's all organized for you here in the ministry so that you just have a word to get in your spirit. You have a theme you're running with for the week and God will build on that theme in your life. He will build on that verse that day. So I'm very visual on giving you a theme for the year, for the season, a theme for that week, or and, and you break it down daily. So there's a repetitive thing God is speaking to you. Now, as you say to God, what is next in my career? What is next in my health? Why am I going through this? What is What do I need to do? This is like prayer time. You're just talking to God. What is the next plan? God will. If you just stay silent, you lay, do some stretches, you're on your walk, you're in your shower, whatever. Did you ask that? Did you communicate that? Because he will begin to flood your heart with either questions, with something that's out of his word that you are not obeying. So he will roar at you, roar at you. You'll hear it. You'll know, whoa, I got I to gotta change this. He'll make sure you have clarity in that. I promise you. You will constantly hear it over and over and over in this ear. And you may keep doing it and keep doing it, but hear it over and over and keep and keep. And he's still there. And da 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 da, da. Anybody ever been there? Because he loves you that much. And he'll still allow you to be who you are. And, and But he's going to say, no, this is not the best thing that you could be doing right now. 
And I would have missed all that if I'm just not showing up. So we don't show up perfect. We show up a mess. But we're still showing up and wanting him to truly do life changings, even when we show up with the wrong attitude sometimes, just show up. Number seven is listen to your heart. So when you're doing that and you're throwing it and you're just quiet, you have your notebook, you make time to sit quiet. If you're not making time and you're just constantly studying, constantly moving, but you haven't time to sit, you're not going to hear those little things. And that's when I write things down. I love those moments. Sometimes I'm listening to a faith-based message at the gym and I have my notes app open all the time. I will write those down. So at the very end, listen to your heart. Psalms 37, four through five says, delight yourself also in the Lord and he shall give you the desires of your heart. Now follow me this week, follow me this week because the desire is your seed. The desire is your seed. If you did not listen to my podcast this week, This is where I want you to end today. And I want you to go listen to the podcast, link that podcast as you as a plant, understand your seed, what's in your seed and follow back up with me on Monday for the rest of this week. And you are ready to go. You should have this, oh my gosh, in my spirit moment ready for Monday. No matter where you're at in the workbook, if you're new here, you should be ready. So you're delighting yourself by showing up today, thank you, by watching the replay, thank you. Now, he's going to start giving you desires as you work in here. He will give them to you. Even when you sit down and you begin to write them down, he already gave me a desire and a vision for each one of my kids. That's a seed. I'm going to write it down. And it says here in this verse, and when you trust him, you surrender, you walk, you show up, you communicate, he will bring it to pass. He will bring it to pass. Amen. He will bring it to pass. What a powerful verse. Psalm 37, four through five. Psalm 37, four through five. Please write that down. The last thing I want to leave you with, and this is going to, again, bridge us into next week, is always be looking at your circumstances. What are your circumstances? Your life wheel. If you are not looking at your life wheel and your circumstances and showing up to Bible study, you're not connecting the two to see God at work in obvious ways and unfolding things in obvious ways. You have to bring the two and connect the two and communicate the two. This workbook's going to teach you. This this workbook will teach you how to um, take a vision and then watch God appear in that vision. Amen? That's what I need you to do. So how beautiful is that? I mean, I gave you some things. Um, again, closing thought, I'm going to write all of these down on a piece of paper. I'm going to text and see, by the way, if my husband will come up here um, as we close out. Maybe I can get him to pray over us. Wouldn't that be nice? Come here, please. Let's see. He may be sleeping. And he's not one that always has his phone office. Let's see. Anyway, so he's the one I communicated my day with. He should be ready. We're going to the gym here at 1.30. Um, let me see if he'll come up here um, and say hi. Let's just see. But as I'm closing out, whether he does or not, um, the next time, next week, or this quarter, as you ponder, what is God's plan? How do I experience God? You've got to think of the things that I just shared with you. And I'm here to teach you and serve you how to do those. And we will do that in our next study starting in spring, which is bloom where you're planted. How are you planted? Where are you planting? What are you planting? I'm going to talk to you about all of God's word on planting your seed and seeking him earnestly. So you will find it and you will bloom in certain areas or you will see bloom where there's doubt. You will see bloom and you will hear God even in the midst of the dark seasons. That's our next study. It's beautiful. It's powerful. It's foundational. Amen. And so closing thought is, I hope that you take this dream and explore and you show up this week with me, head over to the HB women's ministry group, join there and also join the dream and explore accountability group. Those two groups will keep you connected and pushing out some of these these doors that I want you to walk through that I shared with you today. So we are going to do that. You have a couple weeks here. We're on spring break here in the ministry. 
to catch up here in this book if you're not done. Do not forget to show up tomorrow to the Zoom meeting. If you did not get the newsletter that talks about um, the, Zoom the Zoom link, the Zoom address, please email me today. Also, if you are not subscribed to heatherbaxter.com, subscribe immediately because that's where the Zoom link is. That's where everything's out. I'm also going to send another newsletter out Sunday night or Monday morning, inviting you again to that live Bible study. In this live Bible study, what I will be doing is seeing your face and hearing you. I love that. We also have chat. You also can keep your audio off and your visual off if you don't want to. If you are struggling with how to run a Zoom, don't stop there. Zoom is huge. I learned it. You can learn it. Trust me. Google it. Ask somebody. If you need more help, go over to the HB Women's Ministry page and ask, how do I use Zoom? The women there are always serving. If you have a question about a Bible study, if you have a question about something, post it there. I will usually see it. Somebody will highlight me and I will get on it. Like for example, our Amazon store was down on the website. Somebody notified me. Please go check my Amazon store. Go check my Amazon store on the website. It's not to get you to buy things, but the workbooks are on there. All the good reads that I read, all my books that I love reading behind the scenes that are for growth, those are all on there. Skin routine, if people want to know. Um, all of those kind of things are on there in that shop. And so people will look behind me and go, oh my gosh, where'd your shelves come from in your office? Where did this desk come from? Where did this come from? I just have somebody posting it in the idea list so you can find stuff there. Bible study tools, um, you name it, everything is on my Amazon store. So head over there if you're looking for anything. I even put together gift lists if you're shopping for teenagers or stuff like that. We're working on that gift list now to help you. So you just have ideas of, you know, what's cool, what's trending for some teenagers or your niece or whatever. I'm helping you out there. So we even do life, life stuff here. So that is everything on my end. Um, I love you sisters. And I am so grateful that everybody was here today. Um, I just want to look here really quick. Um, let's see. Your obedience triggers. Okay, Angela, my mom never stopped praying for me. And I now know God was always with me, even when I was running. Angela, I met your mom. And yes, she did. Because Angela, at the conference we were at, you went to the bathroom and she told me that. Yeah. You went to the bathroom and your mom told me exactly what you just said. So if that doesn't make you cry and that doesn't see that you moms out there sewing right here and praying and doing this for your kids, if you can't see it right now, it matters. So thank you for sharing that, Angela. Yes, your mom your mom told me a little secret. She was at a woman's event that I spoke at. It was awesome. My struggle is my anger with my 16-year-old daughter. She won't listen to me or her father. I need to pray for my anger and give her to God. Yes, you do. And God will also teach you how to communicate that anger. Thank you for that because in a survey that you ladies are going to be getting, in an email next week, there are going to be survey questions. And I'm looking at workshops that I want to put together on how to serve you in the midst of seasons. And this could be an awesome one. You need tools for that. You definitely need tools. I went through that season. I have the tools, um, but that would be a helpful thing. So if that survey comes out, you might want to put that on there. I feel bad because I did not do my study because I was so focused on my daughter and what she was not doing. That's the enemy's way of winning, to keep your mind off of what you should be transforming in. So I'm glad that you acknowledged that. That was good. Um, thank you for the encouragement. I appreciate you going over the planner again. I still struggle with setting up and staying with it. Bible studies keep me going. Okay, head over to the uh, Dream and Explore accountability group. And Pamela's on there. She does little triggers during the week to keep you going or to help you keep going. But the two together, um, I'm going to share with you how I use mine this coming week so you can see a little bit of an example. I'm not in mine all the time. I might, I schedule in my planner 
when I'm going to do that. And I sit down, but the rest of it just comes automatically. My morning routine does. I'll talk more about that later. Go chips. My middle daughter has that degree, rec therapy and child life and other things related to children. She worked with suicide therapy, teens, et cetera. I don't know that about you. Yeah. I worked with suicide teens too, for a long time. I worked on the children's ward of Detroit Psychiatric Institute after the women's, I worked with the children and I loved it. So yes, um, I'm still doing unveiling love and really enjoying my time. Um, thank you. Reach out if you would like, and if you need any help, yes, reach out, please. Um, are the journal prompts, the questions we should consider for the zoom or are there other questions? Good question, Elma. Um, yes, the journal prompts, I will be pulling a few of those out. The reason why I'm using the journal prompts that were sent in your newsletter is I want you to hear a prompt that God could be asking you in your Bible study time. So I want to learn to bring those to the surface and help you learn how to kind of pull out certain areas of your life and really learn how God could be talking to you. Because that's part of learning scripture too. Like, how do I relate this to this part of my life? The other thing that I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be asking ladies that know where specifically and what, because I can tell you out of all of that, like a few specific days that were life changers that month, like big changers, like that verse is, wow. Um, I'm going to ask you to share the verse and then share your map verse page. And I'm going to keep you on time. We're going to keep moving through it, but I'm going to ask you, how did you get to your reflection and your observation? And what was, has God been doing? Like, where's he been pulling and moving and how have you seen him unfold in your heart? So I'm actually going to call on women to give me an example of how they worked those pages. So again, very good. Even if you didn't take the study, show up because we will be doing these Zooms after every one of our studies. And for our longer studies, I'm probably going to have them once a month just so you can see how God is working. Um, please don't forget the PDF. Yes, Anna, I will send that out to you, sweetie. Um, adult children, son, homeless, and I can't help with housing. Um, hello, Denise. Big. Big, you put that down in your dream journal. What could be or should be? You write it. Remember, adult children, surrender. What did we talk about in surrendering? This is something you can't carry on your backpack. And that's hard. I can't carry my 27-year-old in his decisions and his ways right now. It's surrendered. Palms up living. You're not holding on to that. It's let go and move on. Enjoy where you're at. Give it to God. It's not your time to do that. Um, I know that that's hard. I know that that's hard to hear. Um, but anyway, all right. I don't think my hubby's coming up. I don't think so. I could call him. Should I call him? He's He always talks about everybody here too. Um, all right, we'll close out. If you have any more questions for me, contact me at heatherbaxter.com. There's a contact form. If you need to know something, if you want to know more about coaching calls or something, and you just want to email me and talk to me, then do that. Wow. Hey, can you come here for a second? For what? I got to show you something. It's so cool. Can you come up real quick? No. Yes, it'll take one second, and then we're going. Okay, let's see. He never does things. He never. Let me act quiet for a minute, see if he comes. He's, he's such a Debbie Downer when it comes to like, oh my God, I'm going to be on film. Oh my gosh. He's so funny. He's the funniest guy though. You get him out with people and he's so fun. He's so fun. Angela, you met him. <laughs> people will think that my husband's a snob at first. That's what they'll say. He's such a snob because he doesn't talk. He's just very... All right, let's pray and we'll see if he comes in. Um, ready? Father God, thank you for this time. Thank you for the space. Thank you for the opportunity for live. Thank you for every lady that commented in, that chimed in. Thank you for the ladies that are new. Thank you for the ladies that have been steadfast. Thank you for your dream for HB Ministries. And that dream unfolds to serve every woman here. I pray that there is a breakthrough, a supernatural breakthrough as they begin to just discover you through the principles we shared today, discover you next week as they lay out their dreams and their plans and that they experience you. That's what it's about, that they experience you in their beliefs. They see you in their hurts. 
They see you working in their children, in their marriage. Um, Father, thank you for everything that you're doing on this side of heaven, which seems messy. But when we know you're involved, it's beautiful. And so I pray a blessing over everybody. I pray a blessing over their weekend and uh, the spring break time, wherever you're at. I pray that you are blessed and catching up. And remember that you're never late. You're right on time. In Jesus' name, we all said amen. Well, I guess Mr. is being a little snot because he won't come upstairs because that's how he is. Um, but anyway, he's good. Oh, he just texted me. I know what you're up to. <laughs> <laughs> I know what you're up to. Okay. See, he knows me. He's not coming. He's so funny. Um, all right. I love you sisters. Thank you again for being here. And, um, I will see you next week on live and I will see you Monday over in our live Facebook and over on the dreams and explore accountability group on Facebook. All right. Bye-bye.